much to read on all of these uh, fast moving developments from the former law clerk to Justice Samuel Alito, Barbara Smith. Uh, Barbara, very good to have you. Thanks for having me. Well, nothing like a baptism by fire, I guess. Get right into it here. The first case and among many, it certainly gets off some of the distractions the judges had to deal with the prior. Um, how do you think he is going to fit in with the other eight justices? Well, of course, Justice Kavanaugh has been a judge for 12 years, so right. he knows quite well how to participate actively in oral argument and ask helpful questions. Um, of, course, of course, the Supreme Court is one of the few branches of government that I think thinks long and hard and respectfully about important legal questions, um, and he will fit right in with that tradition. Um, he's a, he's a well-renowned scholar, and he's also a very sort of respectful and thoughtful jurist. So I imagine that he will, uh, he will have an easy time transitioning to First Street. Is he one to pepper with questions versus, let's say, a Clarence Thomas who, who stays largely silent? He's been relatively active on the Court of Appeals, and he tends to ask questions that I think, you know, move the ball forward in argument. He doesn't talk just for the sake of hearing himself talk, uh, but he will ask sort of helpful questions that go straight to the heart of the case. So I, I expect him to continue to participate actively in oral argument going forward. You know, so much has been made up over the fact that he would be the swing vote, the conservative vote to, to be, the, 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 you know, the capper on this conservative majority. But I think, as you had reminded me of when we last chatted, it doesn't always work out that way. There are very few 5-4 decisions on the court anyway. Um, and they ultimately yep. are not sort of lined up along, you know, political, you know, viewpoints, right? Well, that's right. So, for example, in criminal cases, you may often see so-called conservative justices voting for criminal defen defendants um, in ways that sort of fracture the right side of the court. So someone like Justice Alito may vote one way and a Justice Thomas may vote another. Uh, I, I don't think it's fair to say that the justices are partisan because they're really not. They think, uh, think long and hard about the legal questions that are before them, sort of whether or not they might agree with the legal outcome. The goal is to reach the outcome that the law requires. Is there pressure, especially after a contentious nomination, as was Brett Kavanaugh's, that he is very aware of those on the left who are leery of him, uh, very aware of those on the right who, are, who think he's a rock star, so he wants to rebel from, from being typecast that way? How does that work? Well, I certainly hope not. I think one of the great things about our, you know, independent judiciary is the fact that justices, you know, are insulated from that, those sort of political considerations. That's why we give them life tenure. That's why right. we make it very hard to remove judges and justices. Well, no, the only uh, reason so, why I mentioned yeah. it, I'm sorry, I wasn't clear, that's my fault, certainly not yours, is David Souter ended up being the polar opposite of what George Bush Sr. thought he'd be, right? Sure. And, uh, of course, now we have a very uh, much more thorough vetting process, right. I think, on both the left and the right. People are sensitive to sort of wanting to know what they're getting out of justices. And I think with, you know, Justice Kavanaugh and his 12-year record on the bench and his many years of public service before that, you do know what you're getting with him. And I would expect him to continue to be the, the type of man and the type of judge that he's been in the past. This is outside your purview, so you can ignore this. But the timing of Nikki Haley's resignation today as our U.N. ambassador after the whole Kavanaugh thing was settled, what did you make of that? Or was there a connection? Well, you know, it certainly says to me that the Senate Judiciary Committee's work never ends. Um, I'm sure they will turn shortly to the nomination and confirmation process for whomever will replace her. Uh, and, you know, the, the political process chugs along. Indeed it does. That was well put, Barbara Smith. Thank you.